Hey guys, uh, Tween Wave back with you one more time. Good to see all of you again. Uh, thanks for watching the previous videos. Thanks for watching this one. This one's going to be, well, probably short and sweet. Possibly. I do. Th this is a recent vinyl finds, and I've got about ten or so. These are from like the last two weeks. There's some cool things and some kind of not so cool things, but uh, I haven't heard them all, so I can't comment on all of them. I'll comment on the ones I have, and hopefully you guys can comment on the stuff that you've heard and I've not heard, or that you want to hear and I've heard, or that you don't want to hear, and you can say why. So without uh, any more blabbering, I'll just get right to the records. These all came from maybe three or four record stores, and some of them actually came from some uh, thrift shops and some junk shops that I usually uh, hit up every week or so and usually there's nothing in but sometimes they get a new you know new collection in and every now and then you'll find some cool stuff so I was happy to pick these up these are all pretty cheap I don't think anything was more than uh, uh, 15 the most expensive one was like 15 bucks <coughs> and I presented these chronologically not really sure why that's just how it came out so here we go this is a really great record. This is Terry Riley. A Rainbow in Curved Air, and it's an original copy, I believe. Um, this is like minimalist classical stuff. You should check this out if you're curious about, you know, sort of modern classical, I guess you could call it. I mean, this was like 1969, so it feels weird to call this modern, but it is, it is what it is. Um, all the music, and then it says, all the music was played by Terry. In A Rainbow, he plays electric organ, electric harpsichord, roxichord, dumbbeck, and tambourine. Poppy No Good is for soprano sax and electric organ. So, yeah, it's some cool stuff here. Um, I wanted to say something else about this. I uh, can't remember what it was. It's in really good shape. I'm really happy to pick this up. Oh, yeah, if you like The Who's Baba O'Reilly and you think that keyboard part is really cool, this is where it came from. The oh, the Riley part of the title is uh, like a little tribute to Terry Riley. So that's kind of cool there. Um, moving right along. Here's one that's not so good. This is the Amboy Dukes. What is this one? Marriage on the Rocks or Rock Bottom. I guess it has two titles, which is kind of stupid. This record is kind of stupid. I don't really like it that much. Although it's not terrible, just sort of this hard rock. The only song I knew by them was, uh, what is it, Journey to the Center of Your Mind? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, this is featuring Ted Nugent, and I don't know. I didn't really like it, but there is one song that was very strange. The title is The Inexhaustible Quest for the Cosmic Cabbage, and it's Probably one of the worst songs I've ever heard. It sounds like uh, trying to be Frank Zappa and failing. So maybe check that song out just for how ridiculous it is. It's like 10 minutes long. The rest of this isn't that great, but it's not that terrible either. Just sort of, you know, when you when you see records for a dollar, you tend to pick them up more frequently than you would if they were more money. And the flip side of that is that sometimes you're, you know, disappointed. But, you know, not terrible. Just not great. Jeff Beck, Blow by Blow. This one, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I never had. It's really common, you know, this was a dollar. But it's a good record. Um, I heard it a long, long time ago, and I definitely remember some of these songs. I haven't listened to it since, so it's going to be a little, uh, little while before I play that one. But that's a good one. Um, this is Archie Shep. This is a 1975 recording. And let's see who's on this. Archie Shep is sort of avant-garde jazz, although this is this was something released on the Freedom label. Um, so it's like that was sort of their their jazz, you know, freeform jazz experimental thing for the jazz artists that they had. But this is kind of conventional, actually. I've listened to it just once, and I really enjoyed it. There's a couple of Latin things on here. Um, I actually don't know the other guys. Oh, I know Dave Burrell. He's playing piano. 
There's a uh, Charles Greenlee, trombone, Ray Draper, tuba, Walter Davis Jr., electric piano, Brandon Ross's guitar. So it's a big band. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. I like this um, this record though. Archie Shep. I have a few other things by him, and um, always looking out for more because he's a really good really good sax player. <clears throat> Moving right along, this is a Lou Reed record, Street Hassle, something I didn't have by him. Actually, I haven't listened to this one yet, so I can't comment. But, um, when, when did this come out? 1978? Um, yeah, I, I'm missing a lot of Lou Reed records, so happy to pick this one up for cheap. Again, this was a thrift store find, only two bucks, so I was really happy to get that. And, moving right along... Uh, here's one for a dollar. This is a John Williams soundtrack. Return of the Jedi. Um, this is like the maybe fifth or sixth John Williams soundtrack. He's done so many. It's almost like basically if it wasn't a dollar, I wouldn't have bothered. But the thing with John Williams is there. Oh, there's an insert too. I didn't notice this. This is kind of cool. Some pictures from the movie. But yeah. Um, they're pretty much all the same, but they're all pretty good, so I don't mind having, you know, Star Wars and uh, E.T. What else do I have? Um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Here's one that I'm really happy to get. Um, haven't listened to it yet, but I'm excited to. This is The Special, a.k.a. This is basically the third specials record. I love the first two. The first one a lot, and the second one is also very good. This one... Um, is not quite the specials because it's special aka so it's like i think a couple members were gone some were still around some were left uh who's not here oh uh, i think i think terry hall was the singer and he's not on here um i haven't listened to this so i'm i don't know how good this is but i'm looking forward to it because i really like the specials good ska Better than uh, the English beat and Madness, although those bands are good too. Now here's another one. Um, this one's okay. This is Miles Davis. Uh, what is this called? Amandla from like 1989. Yeah, 80s Miles you don't really need to bother with because you know he kind of all his best music was you know behind him. Although this really wasn't that bad. I have a couple other uh, 80s Miles. And there's some, just some bad decisions on it, like really uh, cheesy, like metal guitar playing, or what else? Ba just bad, like cover tunes, like Cyndi Lauper and stuff. But this is actually decent. There's, um, I'm trying to remember who else is playing on it. Kenny Garrett is a good sax player. Marcus Miller, uh, really great bass player. So yeah, the sax playing is pretty good. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Garrett does a good job. Miles does a pretty good job. It's, you know, you could tell it's from the 80s. Um, you know, very, very 80s drums and stuff, but it's not bad. Here's uh, Clint Black. There's a, uh, what is this, 1989? Yeah, 1989, so this would almost be considered contemporary country. Um, I, to be honest, I don't even know why I picked this up. I heard some good things about it, and it is pretty good. Again, it's definitely obvious that it was made in the 80s, but there's some there's some decent songs on here. Killing Time is a, is a really good song. It's also the name of the record. Probably why it was titled that. And last but not least, this is something that I'm really excited about. This blows away all the other records. Um, I haven't heard it yet, but so maybe maybe it doesn't, but... I'm pretty sure it's going to. This is Cool G Rap and DJ Polo. This is an original copy on the Cold Chillin' label? Or Cool, yeah, Cold Chillin'. Um, great, great hip-hop. And it's out of print. This, the CDs are even out of print. You'd have to get, like, a CD that goes for, like, 20 bucks on Amazon. And same thing with the record. So I had a, a store credit at Amoeba for about $10. This was like 15, so that, that worked out pretty awesome. Yeah, this is classic, classic hip-hop right here. 1989. Uh, I think it's all Mar yeah, Marley Marl's doing all the beats, so it's pretty much guaranteed to be good. 
So there's there's the recent vinyl finds. Um, leave me your comments, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, later.